Hi fellas, I hope you're doing great today. Well, during the fifth semester of my graduation, I saw one of my seniors working on a project. It was related to telecommunication. And I saw that they were using a couple of computers for their project. And it was not Windows installed on computers. So I asked one of my seniors that this is not Windows. Which operating system are you using? And he told me that, man, this is Fedora 4. That was the first moment of my life I saw Linux working on a computer. And it caught my eye. So me and my project members, we decided that we should be working on a project that should use Linux as the core operating system. And fortunately, we found a project that was related to VoIP, Voice over Internet Protocol. And in our project, we installed and configured IP multimedia subsystem and asterisk server. And the great news is our project won first position in NUST competition. <laughs> Career as a network and support operations engineer and from that day I worked for a couple of companies on site and remotely and I found one thing common in all these companies and it was Linux operating system every company was using Linux as their core operating system in one of my recent companies we were using Debian 10 in the web hosting companies where I worked as systems administrator remotely they were using CentOS Ubuntu for their backup servers cloud Linux as their web servers and CentOS as their cPanel servers. So if you're looking forward to start your career as a DevOps engineer, a software engineer, or a developer, Linux is your operating system. You will be working on Linux extensively in your career. And now the developers prefer to have Ubuntu installed on their desktop instead of Windows. So in this lecture, we are going to discuss what is Linux, what are the use cases of Linux, what is used for, and who is the man behind Linux, and where Linux is used in the top organization of the world. So let's jump in fellas. Linux is the best known and most used operating system in the world. Linux is a family of open source Unix-like operating systems based on the Linux kernel. Don't worry, we are going to discuss kernel in detail in the next slide. And that kernel was first released in September 1991 by Linus Torvald. And it is supported on almost every major computing platform, including 64-bit ARM and Spark architectures, making it one of the the most widely supported operating system and guys this is not the fact that Linux only runs on computers and those architectures the beauty of Linux is that Linux also runs on embedded systems like routers automation controls smart home devices and video game consoles if you have Tesla it runs on Linux my favorite companies SpaceX and NASA use Linux to power their rockets and Mars missions let me share some examples Linux has emerged as a popular operating system for web servers such as Apache and Nginx as well as for network operations, scientific computing tasks which require huge compute clusters, running databases, desktop and endpoint computing and running mobile devices with OS versions like Android. If your mobile devices is running Android, it is also based on Linux. So this man, Linus Torvalds, who is an American software engineer, created the first version of the Linux kernel. Also, he is the founder of Git, which is a distributed version control for source code. Initially, Torvalds wanted to call the kernel he developed as Freaks, but his friend renamed it to Linux. So Linus plus Unix is equal to Linux. So Linux has different use cases. And since we know that Linux is highly configurable and depends on a modular design which enables users to customize their own versions of Linux. Since Linux is open source, even you can create your own version of Linux or the distribution of Linux. Linux has different use cases like server OS, which means that Linux is used for web servers, database servers, file servers, email servers, and any other type of shared server. It means that Linux is well suited for all types of server applications. The second use case is desktop OS, which means that Linux can be used for personal productivity computing. Linux is open source and freely available desktop environment for the user. The third use case is headless server OS. What does this mean? It means that Linux is used for systems that do not require a graphical user interface and they also do not need terminal and keyboard. These headless systems 
are often used for remotely managed networking server and other devices. The fourth Linux use case is that Linux is used for systems that require limited computing function. Linux is used as an embedded operating system for a variety of applications. For instance, household appliances, Internet of Things, automotive and network file system appliances. The fifth use case of Linux is that it is operating system which is used for routers, routers switches, DNS servers, home networking devices, and much more. Linux is also used as software development operating system for enterprise software development because Linux is home to some of the most widely used open source software development tools. For example, Git for distributed source control, Vim and Emacs for source code editing and compilers and interpreters for almost every programming language. And the last use case of Linux is it is used as cloud operating system for cloud instances. Major cloud computing providers like AWS, Azure and GCP offer access to cloud computing instances or VMs which run Linux. In addition to that, depending on the application, Linux can be optimized for different purposes such as networking performance, computing performance, deployment on specific hardware or deployment on systems with limited memory. When we talk about Linux operating system, you will hear that term that it is available under the GNU GPL public license. And what is GNU GPL? It is a software license from the Free Software Foundation that ensures every user receives the essential freedoms that define free software which is free of restrictions. Well that was the definition but in simple words GNU GPL license means that you can use this software for free. Approximately 70% of free software packages are released under this license. So it is also known as GPL means general public license and this license was created to distribute free operating system and free software. So the GNU GPL license is also considered as open source license. You don't have to pay a penny for using open source software. All right guys now let's talk about Linux kernel which is the main component of Linux operating system. Linux kernel is the core interface between a computer's hardware and its processes. Linux kernel exists within the operating system and it controls all the major functions of the hardware. So in simple words, a kernel is a software which resides in the memory and it tells CPU what to do. Let me explain it with the following diagram. So here your applications are running, your apps, your software and here it is the hardware which means that this is your CPU, this is your RAM and these are IO devices like keyboard, mouse, printer etc. So in order to have these devices perfectly communicate with your apps and software, this is where the kernel plays its part. And this is our kernel. Now if we talk about the Linux kernel's responsibilities that what does this kernel do? The kernel does memory management, CPU management, and devices management. If we dig more, what does memory management mean? That your kernel keeps track of how much memory is used to store what and where. And if we talk about CPU or process management, and if we talk about CPU management, Linux kernel determines which process, application or software can use the CPU or central processing unit. When and how long. Kernel is also used as input output device driver and it acts as mediator or interpreter between the hardware and processes. In short, if you are asked that what does Linux kernel do, you can simply answer that. Linux has the full control over everything in the system. In addition to that, Linux kernel is also responsible for preventing, protecting and mitigating conflicts between different processes. Now let me explain it with a common example. This is our human brain. This is the stuff I have to do.
Now let's take kernel as the human brain. This is our this is kernel, and our daily routine work as software or applications, and the household stuff as the hardware. So just like human brain tells us what to do and what not to do, similarly the kernel tells the hardware and processes what to do and what not to do. There is a common example of reflex action that we studied in biology well, that happens with us in our daily life. For instance, this is really hot cup of tea and my brain tells me that don't touch it, it's really hot and it will burn your mouth. Will I touch it? No. So just like our human brain is controlling everything we are doing in our life, similarly the kernel is controlling everything that is being done by the hardware and the processes. So without a human brain, there is no human. Similarly, without a kernel, there is no operating system. I hope I am able to clear my point. So for your convenience, I have written the details here as well. And here it is the graphical representation of the kernel. And you can see that kernel is controlling the applications and the hardware of the system. So if you want to revise your kernel concepts, I have written the responsibilities of kernel here, which is memory management, process management, device drivers, and system calls and security. All right, fellas, here is the quick overview of Linux distributions, which are different flavors of Linux, or you can say that different versions of Linux, like Ubuntu, Fedora, Debian, CentOS, Arc Linux, Kali Linux, Linux Mint, and so on. Distributions usually distinguish themselves from the pack by addressing a specific goal, philosophy, function, or target market. Linux is open source and I have told you earlier that you can customize and create your own distribution. So fellas, we have covered 20% of our Linux chapter and in the introduction part, we have covered Linux history uses kernel and distributions. So in the next lecture, we will cover that 80% of the Linux part which is what is file system, how to install and configure Linux, the directory structure of Linux, files, folders, configuration files, and how to install something on Linux. In addition to that, we will also have a quick overview of bootloader and grub as well. All right, fellas, it is really important for DevOps engineers to know about Linux. And that's what we have discussed in this lecture. What is Linux? What is kernel? And what are the uses of Linux? And in the next lecture, we are going to discuss about the Linux directories Linux file system. How can we install Linux on our system? So something super exciting is coming in the next lecture. Stay tuned. I will watch in the next video. Oh, I really forgot to tell you that. Please don't forget to subscribe my channel. See ya.